Today on The Hookup, we're gonna test out one of, if not the most expensive Alexa device on the market. This LED light speaker combination with Alexa built-in is called the Juno AI. And we're gonna compare it to some much cheaper options to see if you get what you pay for. About a year ago, Zemismart sent me a smart light and speaker combination, and I was really excited about it. Until I listened to it. The audio quality was, well, bad, and dimming the LED actually caused a high-pitched whine to emanate from the speaker. I sent some feedback to my Zemismart contact and told them that if they were going to market a speaker, it was well worth it to mark up the price a little bit and make it sound really good. Now, I'm not an audiophile, but I also can't stand listening to music out of terrible speakers. All I want is a nice sounding speaker that gives a built-in look that can be installed easily in existing fixtures. This is going to be my review of those speakers. My ultimate goal was to be able to listen to music in the shower without having to turn up the volume on my Echo Tap to 11 or worry about charging a portable waterproof speaker. Unfortunately, only two of the speakers that we're going to look at today are technically wet rated, so my choices for above the shower are going to be a little bit limited. But we're going to test them all in that same location to get a controlled testing environment. Here's the lineup from least expensive to most expensive. The Singled Pulse is a screw-in replacement for a BR30 style light that includes a JBL speaker and a dimmable LED light controlled by Bluetooth. Singled's suggested retail price of the Pulse was $99, but you can get a two-pack of them for $19, so I feel like sales may not have gone the way they planned. Next is the Singled Solo, one of two bulbs in my test that are rated for damp locations. The Singled Solo is an RGBW bulb that's also controlled by Bluetooth. The Singled Solo costs around $30, and it's more similar in size to a traditional light bulb. Sort of third, I bought these Pile 4-inch flush mount downlight speaker combinations, but after opening the package, I decided not to include them in my tests, since they aren't really a drop-in replacement for your existing lights. The Pile speakers are essentially a speaker with an LED lamp screwed to the front of them. They have no built-in power transformer, no built-in Bluetooth adapter, and no built-in amplifier. All those pieces are separate units that you'll need to find power and room for in your ceiling. If you're thinking about going this route, I'd highly recommend that you just stick with a traditional light bulb and then install ceiling mounted speakers beside them. Fourth is the second damp rated bulb, the Lithonia Lighting 6 inch downlight replacement. The Lithonia is designed to be operated by a standard light switch and it has a rechargeable battery to keep the Bluetooth connected and playing even when the lights are off. A single Lithonia bulb runs around $67 on Amazon. And last, but definitely not least, is the Mac Daddy of Lights, the Juno AI by Acuity Brands. This model of the Juno AI has a dimmable, tunable white light with 90 plus CRI, JBL speakers, and Amazon Alexa built in. The Juno AI will set you back a cool $399, which I would normally scoff at. But after testing it, it's pretty clear that this device is really in a class of its own. Still not gonna be for everybody, but impressive nonetheless. The first and most important test of a light speaker combination is sound quality. When I was testing these lights, I played the music for the Singled and the Lithonia lights through an Amazon Echo Flex because it can plug directly into an outlet and stay off the counter. But for the Juno AI, it has Alexa built in, so there's no need for another device. You can see here that the frequency response ranges are basically directly correlated to the speaker's price tag, with the Juno wildly outperforming the rest. Then significantly worse was the Lithonia, followed closely by the Singled Solo, and then the Singled Pulse. Here's some example audio from each of the speakers so you can hear it for yourself. In person, the difference is even more staggering. None of the speakers sounded terrible, but for most of them I thought to myself, yeah, this is acceptable for a shower speaker. But the Juno sounds superb, the kind of speaker that you would use to actually fill a room with high quality sound. 
In the end, it's still a single speaker, but the engineers of Juno have done an amazing job tuning the enclosure to provide an even and consistent sound. I'd say the runner-up in overall sound quality was probably the Singled Solo, which is pretty impressive since it's using a one and a half inch speaker, but the sound is definitely acceptable at low to medium volumes, and it only became distorted around a volume of around eight out of 10. But sound is only half the job of a speaker light combination, so let's talk about the differences in the light they produce. The Lithonia light is the least connected of all the devices. It's intended to be turned on and off via a typical light switch that you'd cut the power to the device completely. The Lithonia has a rechargeable lithium ion battery that allows it to continue to play music and stay connected via Bluetooth even when the light switch is turned off. But in my testing, the light needed to be on for at least one hour out of every 12 hours to keep a charge even on standby mode. It's not really a huge problem, but you are going to hear the Bluetooth reconnect if it's fully lost power. And because there's a charging circuit and other electronics in the speaker, you're not going to be able to use the light with a dimmer, so you're stuck with a single color temperature and brightness with this bulb. The Singled bulbs are both controlled via Bluetooth and the Singled Pulse app. The Singled Pulse is dimmable, so you can set it at a desired brightness and then control it via a light switch. But because the app requires your phone to be connected via Bluetooth, I don't expect many people will take the time to adjust the brightness on a daily basis. The Singled Solo is similar, requiring you to connect your phone via Bluetooth to adjust the settings with the Pulse app. But the Singled Solo also is RGBW, meaning you could select different colors if that's what you're into. For the Singled Solo, I was a little disappointed that you aren't able to have the white channel on at the same time as the RGB channels, and the RGB channels are pretty dim compared to other available RGBW options on the market today. Still, the app does allow you to select your desired setting, and then you can control it via the light switch. But since you are turning power on and off completely, it will make the Bluetooth connect sound every time you turn on the light, which could get a little annoying. The Juno AI light is intended to be constantly powered, not controlled by a light switch. The Juno is adjustable via Amazon Echo commands to change both the color temperature and the brightness. The other strange thing about the Juno light is that the light looks really good, like really good. I know it sounds like a strange thing to say, but things that are being lit up by the Juno just look better than they do under other light. This is a property called CRI, or Color Rendering Index, and in my experience, manufacturers, especially Chinese white label brands, tend to wildly overrepresent their CRI. However, the Juno actually produces this high CRI light, and with the risk of sounding like a broken record, the light produced by the Juno AI just looks better than other kinds of light. The Juno AI is one of those devices that when you see it, hold it, and use it, you can tell that it is an expensive, high quality product. But, while the Juno AI is absolutely amazing at what it does, it's not without its problems. The first of which is that it's referred to as a third-party Alexa built-in product. And while the features available on these products are slowly increasing, there are some important things that are still missing. Specifically, this one was a pretty big problem for me. Spotify is not supported on this device. The second very large issue in my case was that the Juno AI isn't wet or damp rated, meaning that the circuit board hasn't been conformally coated and it may be vulnerable to corrosion in high humidity places like a bathroom. Third, the Juno lacks an important feature in its firmware relating to its power on state, meaning what happens to the light after a power loss. The only options available in the firmware are previous status and then two default values, but the previous status doesn't refer to its previous on off status only its previous color temperature and dimming level. So no matter what, even if the light was turned off when it lost power, it's gonna be on when the power is restored. And that to me is a super poor plan and one that I hope can be easily fixed in a firmware update. And the last issue that I had with the Juno is that it uses Amazon Echo as its smart home connectivity hub. Now, none of the other bulbs have any smart home connectivity at all, so this is an additional feature that the Juno has, but it does mean that it can't be easily added to a locally controlled smart home platform. I created a little bit of a workaround in Node-RED using a virtual contact sensor that gets tied to a Shelly light switch and then triggers an Alexa routine to turn the Juno on and off, but all that seems a little bit complex and sloppy for a $400 device. I reached out to Juno to see if there was a better option, like an API or MQTT or something like that, but I haven't heard back from them. Overall, the Juno AI is super impressive, and if you have a money is no object situation where you need a great light, a speaker, and a built-in Alexa device without cluttering up a shelf or countertop, then the Juno AI is an awesome product. And there are even other Juno products that have just a speaker and a light, or just a light if you wanted to outfit an entire room with them. 
But if you're looking to listen to music in the shower without breaking the bank, the Juno isn't for you. And the other lights aren't bad at all. Specifically, if you have a light that you turn on and off a lot, and you don't want to deal with the Bluetooth connection sound every time you flip the switch, the Lithonia light is damp rated, sounds decent, and it has a battery to stay online when it's not connected to power. If you only turn on the switch when you're ready to listen to music, like maybe a light that's directly above a shower, the Singled Solo RGBW is a much cheaper option than Lithonia, and it sounds just as good, and it screws right into a typical light socket. As I mentioned before, the Echo Flex is also really great for closing the loop for playing music out of these speakers in the bathroom or kitchen, because it doesn't take up any counter space. As always, the links for all the products that I talked about today are down in the description. If you have a different light speaker combination that I missed that you think is really great, please let me know down in the comments. Thank you to all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.